everyone. Uh, today we're going to look at ratios and proportions and how to deal with those, how to solve those things. Um, now, a ratio is a comparison of two quantities using division. So think of it as just a fraction. And that's really all it is, is a, uh, a reduced form of a fraction. Now, there's a couple different ways you might see this. Uh, the first is written as A to B. So you might have a number of 3 to 2. Okay, the second way is using a colon. And that's going to be 3 to 2. But they're read the same way. The last way is using that division or fraction sign, kind of like 3 over 2. All right, now what that is, um, is a reduced form of a fraction, and we always want to simplify. No matter what, you want to get it as low as possible. So if I gave you the fraction or the ratio 9 to 6, you're going to simplify. Both of those can be divided by 3, and that reduces down to that 3 to 2. So if you're given a problem, try and simplify and reduce as far as possible. All right, so let's see how this works in, a, uh, in an actual problem. So a baseball player has 348 at-bats in a season and gets 113 hits. We want to know what's the batting average. Now, this requires you to know a little bit about what batting average is, uh, but it's a ratio of how many hits they get out of how many at-bats. So it's hits to at-bats. Okay, so we take that and we set it up as 113 hits over 348 at-bats. Now that could also be rewritten as 113 over 348. Okay, now you look at that, you see if you try and simplify, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, if you can, you do, if you can't, that's fine. And in this case, it cannot be simplified. But the way that batting averages, if you know anything about baseball, are figured out is they reduce them over a thousand. Okay, so it's over a thousand essentially. Now, what that ends up doing is creating a decimal. So you're going to take this 113 divided by 348 and you get 0.3247 and so on. And we're going to round to 0.325. And so you say that the baseball player has a 325 batting average. Okay, now if you think of that in terms of, of a. Um, of ratio, it would be 0.325 to 1, uh, and that's the way that that's reduced. But this fraction here is the ratio that they were looked for. Okay, so the decimal is just a little bit of an extension. <coughs> now, another way that we can deal with ratios is to solve problems dealing with perimeter areas, sides of triangles, angles of triangles, any of these different measures. Uh, and this one in particular is the angles of a triangle. Now think about what you know about the angles of a triangle. They always add up to 180 degrees, right? So how does that help us? Well, like we've said, this is the reduced form as a fraction. Okay, so 3, 4, 5 are all being multiplied by some unknown value. So I'm going to say that I take my 3 and I'm going to multiply by that unknown. I take my 4 and I'm going to multiply by the unknown. And I'm going to take the 5 and I'm going to multiply by the unknown. That's the ratio that we are going to actually be uh, reducing by. So you take that. Um, these are the angles of a triangle. If I add up my angles of a triangle, they will equal 180 degrees. And then you solve from here. So 3 plus 4 plus 5 gives you 12x equals 180. Divide by x, and you get x equals 15. <coughs> now make sure you understand what they're asking for. They're not asking for x. They're asking for the angles. So you take that and you substitute it back in. So you've got 15 times 3, which is 45 degrees. 15 times 4, which is 60 degrees. And 15 times 5, which is 75 degrees. So your angles of your triangle are 45, 60, and 75 degrees. So those are a couple different ways you can use these ratios. Now what this leads to is something called a proportion. Now a proportion is when two ratios are equal to each other. Okay, so in this example you see here I've got AB equals CD. Now we can solve these using something called cross multiplication. Now cross multiplication only occurs when you have two fractions equal to each other, or two ratios equal to each other. And for cross multiplication I'm going to take my A and my D and I multiply. Then I take my B and my C and I multiply. That's the cross multiplication. And you can see that's what I end up with right over there. So it's AD equals BC. So let's give these a try right here. 
I want to solve this proportion, figure out what x is. So I'm going to cross multiply. So I take 6 times 31.5, and that's going to be equal to x times 21, which is 21x. And I kind of <coughs> did one of the things that I don't like to do when I use x as multiply. I'm going to keep it that way, or you guys will often see it as a set of parentheses. So you go 6 times 31.5, uh, that gives you 189 equals 21x, and then divide by 21, okay, and in that case, you end up with 9, and there's your value for x. Alright, so hopefully that cross multiplication made some sense. Now, the second example, I want you guys to give that one a try, and uh, pause the video, come back and see how you did in just a second. Okay, hopefully you guys had a chance to pause the video and give that a try. Let's see what happens. So you take the x plus 3 and you multiply by 5. Now the trick to this is you have to make sure you distribute that 5. So it ends up as 5 times x plus 3. Okay, and then you do 2 times the 4x. So 2 times 4x, and I'll work through that in just a second. So there's my cross multiplication set up. Then you distribute here, so you got 5x plus 15. On this side, you're going to multiply the 2 times the 4x, which gives you an 8x, and now solve for x. So subtract 5x. That gives me 15 equals 3x, divide by 3, and I end up with x equals 5, and that should be the final answer you were able to get. All right, final one. Let's see how this works with word problems. So it says the ratio of students to teachers in a school is 15 to 1. Now what you need to understand is the way that this is given to you, students to teachers, is the same way that these numbers line up. Okay, so if we're looking at maybe a fraction, we've got students over teachers, and there's 15 students for every one teacher. Now the next part says, if there are 81 teachers, how many students attend the school? Well think about what this is as a ratio. So students over te teachers is 15 to 1. That's going to be the same as if I have 81 teachers to X number of students. Now you got to remember, the teachers was in, were in the denominator, so my 81 has to be in the denominator. My X is going to be in my numerator. And so now I've got this proportion, which I've set up. From here you solve. So cross multiply. So you've got X times 1, which is X. You've got 81 times 15 which is 1,215, which means there are 1,215 students in that school. All right, so that's how we use ratios and proportions to solve problems. If you need some help, let me know. Otherwise, good luck on your assignment, and I will talk to you soon.